Euro 2024 is right around the corner, so today I'll be playing the fully licensed tournament in FC 24 before EA even dropped their free DLC update coming in June. Thanks to the help of PC mods that do EA's job better than they ever could, we have access to all the teams, graphics, the full tournament playthrough, new kits, the official broadcast package, and of course the official trophy to simulate an experiment with here today. Here we have it, we're loading up into the game and you can already see the Euros theme, the trophy and the ball in the background. The mod is in full effect right now and we get this lovely little, you know, Euros presentation intro just to get you into the theme, into the vibe of it all. And look, uh, this video is actually insane. You've got just the nice little build up and the match day hype around every single game that you're probably going to be seeing on TV. Germany, the host country, the, oh, of course, Italian champions, baby. We are there and we are defending our crown in 2024. It felt like just yesterday we went on penalties against England and uh, there's no secrets to who I'm backing. It brings back the vibes of those retro FIFA games that had a lot of pre-match build-up and all like the promo video that would roll before the game even started. But here we are in the Euro 2024 mode. We're hyped, we're loading in and I can't wait to get my hands on it and play around with the tournament that I in fact will be attending in real life. So keep your eyes peeled. Before I take you into the depths of what this Euro 24 mod has to offer, make sure to drop the video a like if you do go on to enjoy and subscribe for more content coming your way. Hit the bell so you keep up to date with everything happening on the channel this year. I'm happy to report that this mod not only works for tournament mode, but also within career mode, both manager and player career. So let's give this bad boy a spin before the tournament even kicks off. Here's how the tournament looks in career mode once you scroll through all the competitions. At the bottom right there, you've got the UEFA Euro, no more European Championships. The official logo, you can start to see the theme creep in a bit through the menus, but nothing else really. You don't get the official groups. Everything is kind of randomized. And most importantly, it isn't the proper format. It is still the OG 2012 version where it's four groups of four, something EA have barely paid attention to. And it's impossible for the mods to really restructure this part of career mode and how the Euros are actually programmed. You get some of the official branding and you don't even get the actual trophy. So it's kind of an L if you want to try it out in your career mode saves. However, there is a silver lining. Within tournament mode, we finally have a reason to use it within our domestic tournaments. Scroll down all the way to men's cups and then once you're in there we have the glorious Euro 2024 waiting for us. EA used to have the license back in 2012, lost it out to Pez back in 2016 and then 2020. Now they've got it back and PC modders have added it in before the free updates even arrived and boom just like that we can start the tournament with the proper groups, all the proper teams, the new kits. However we do have to run down a few workarounds so let's go through them. Before you start the tournament you've got to make sure you've loaded up the right squads that come with this mod. We can play in either one of two ways. I can load in all the real life nations and their realistic teams, plus a few others that aren't in base game FIFA with the national team squad file, or I could have a little bit of fun and experiment with some icons and throw them into the Euro 2024 gauntlet. But now though, in the first simulation, I just want to run things all realistically, then do our national team squad call up. So if you have a team in mind you want to use, you want to make sure that all the players that you want at the tournament are on the plane this is where you do it so for example we'll scroll down to England and you can swap out and pick and choose who is going into the squad so for like Reese James he's probably going to be injured so we'll swap him out with Tamori you've got the national team squad selection screen to play around with it's literally up to your discretion because once you start the tournament you can't go in and change who you've picked or who you've selected this is where you can go around and customize the squads and call up someone like a Korean Benzema for France even though he's banned from the national team or someone who's retired from the national team, like N'Golo Kante. There are no rules. For now though, I'll keep things as they are, as realistic as possible, unless I see something incredibly egregious like Bastoni not being called up. He is a starter for Italy. There is no way he's not getting on the plane. Making sure every nation is at their strongest is my top priority.
Now with all the admin out the way, we've got a few stipulations, some few team swaps we have to manage. Considering the playoffs for the three extra qualification spots haven't gone on yet, they're literally happening this week. And some team limitations, I'll explain. Let me go through them all because for Ireland, we're going to swap them out with Slovakia, which this mod adds into the game. And they actually qualified in real life, so in they go. Alongside Slovenia for Norway, Erling Haaland, Odegaard and all them couldn't manage to secure qualification and Slovenia will slot right in. Sweden failed to qualify too, so in their place, we're going to put in Greece, considering in that path C, the only team I have access to is the Greeks. There's no Georgia, no Kazakhstan. Out of sheer necessity, we just have to select Greece for that final playoff spot. For technical reasons, I'm going to take out Finland and replace them. We're going to slot in Albania's replacement. I know this is quite controversial, but it's going to be Russia. And yes, we could well and truly see a Ukraine v Russia game in this tournament simulation. I, I don't know if I'm ready for that. We're also going to add in Austria, who will be replacing Poland. Again, another chance for them to qualify. But now, I want to guarantee and create the group stages as realistically as possible. Thanks to this mod adding a whole bunch of new teams in, we've got some options, like in case Ukraine don't qualify. You can add in Bosnia if you really wanted to. Or Iceland, or just leave Ukraine in there. Now, once you're finished with the gruesome task of setting everything up, you can now advance. I'll be controlling everyone for the purpose of this simulation. We're going in to start new things. You can already see the Euros Cup and Ball. All the official tournament branding. Here's how all the groups are looking and lining up now. We have everything perfect with Group A. Germany, Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland all in there. Group B, the mini group of death. The only thing different here is Russia replacing Albania, but Spain, Croatia, and Italy are all in there. Over in Group C, it's regular programming with England, Denmark, Serbia, and Slovenia. Pretty easy draw there for the three Lions. And in Group D, here's where I've predicted Wales to go through in that playoff path A, so they're going to join in with France, Netherlands, and Austria. Moving down to Group E, and that's where we see Belgium, Slovakia, who aren't in FIFA yet, Romania, and we've gone with the Ukraine to go through as winners of player path B. And finally, this could potentially be the most entertaining group of the lot if Greece actually make it through. If they win path C, they're going to get drawn in with Portugal, Czech Republic, and Turkey. Yes, Greece versus Turkey could be the wildest game of this Euros. And trust me, people, I'm here here for it. Not only all the nations and accurate draws, but we also have all the brand new kits that will be on full display. The players will be repping both home and away. We've got the host Germany with that stunning little kit. It's up there with their 2014 World Cup winner shirt. It's absolutely elite, especially that goalkeeper kit. God damn. Now right here, you can see a little sneak preview of every single new kit in the game. I'll give you a quick look at them all. We've got Poland, Portugal, which I was hoping for that leak to be true of like that cross on the home jersey, but they've just gone with the plain old boring red all over. Scotland is another team that has been sanctioned to the Adidas template curse. Spain also with another generic Adidas template. I mean, I like the colors, but it's just kind of mid. Wales, again, it's just reminding me of Portugal. Red all over and boring. How many Adidas templates are going to dominate this tournament? Hopefully not many. It feels like every single nation, but Hungary, at least they've kind of got that middle chest thing going on. Other than that, I just don't really see the vision. Yeah, Netherlands, that's not too bad. I, I dig it. The home kit it's passable, but I'm pretty sure their away is pretty nice too. I mean, Russia were deleted from the game ages ago, but just in case you want to see what their current kit's looking like now, it's middle of the road. It's like 6 out of 10. Serbia, the only thing saving them right here is that little bit of gold trimming on the neck and the shoulders. Greece. Okay, if this is actually their official kit, that is stunning. I, I am a fan. Even though I'm Italian myself, I can acknowledge when the Greeks have actually done something decent. Turkey, I'm pretty sure the number isn't going to be like that on the actual kit, but I'm a fan. Like I say the same thing over again. Boring. This guy is about seven foot tall. How tall is this guy? Six foot seven. That was like Mr. Fantastic from Fantastic Four. Doing his best Stretch Armstrong impression. Yeah, Slovenia. I like that little mountain feature. It's okay. Slovakia. Yeah, it could be better. England. It's clean. It's modern. It's just safe. But I think their away kit is even better and I can't wait to see them wear it. As much as I don't want them winning the Euros, I mean, they're probably one of the favorites. They're probably going to actually do it this time. Belgium home kit looks so much better in real life and especially the Tintin inspired away. They have won the Euros just with their kits alone. That cherry wine, the crimson red, whatever color you want to call it. Mwah, chef's kiss. And this has to be hands down one of the worst Croatia kits in years. Come on Italy, we have to beat these lot in the groups. With a shirt like that it is downright trash. It is, it is like E tier, D tier. I thought Petr Cech's regen was reincarnated right there but it looks like the Czech Republic just stock standard Czech Republic 
public home shirt, nothing much to report on. Brands, I don't mind. I like the shorts. If they keep that pinstripe shorts look, that is, it is a game changer. Nice, clean, confident look. No World Cup winner's badge, which kind of takes it down a notch. God damn, that is going to be one of the funkiest kits we're going to see all tournament. Germany and Adidas, it's like they've only knocked it out the park for the home nation. For everyone else, they kind of just went through the motions. Speaking of Germany, this tournament actually incorporates the real life stadiums like the Red Bull Arena. And the only stadium that's not in the game is the Allianz Arena by Munich's home ground because Pez actually own it or eFootball. However, 9 out of 10 stadiums are actually already in the game and are fully playable already unlike the Qatar World Cup where they only added like 3 or 4 stadiums out of a possible 8. I just want to see what the Euros atmosphere looks like. The lead up into the game, the build up cutscenes, the broadcast package in full action and you can see there the Germans getting in the spirit, the face paint, the afros, the team gear. It is a rainy day here in Leipzig but we've got the Sky Sports logo which I'm a fan of and we're not on old gen so we don't get the full broadcast package of all the lineups and the teams walking out the tunnel but we do get the official scoreboard just simulate through the whole entire tournament up until the final and see what goes down as Hungary are already in on goal and before I can even back out Hungary take the lead here 1-0 against the host and if they keep this result it's going to be a shock upset within inside 10 minutes and I'm not going to do every game like this I'm going to quick sim every single game of the tournament until we reach the big dance and then watch the Euro final play out with you all as Germany have already equalized here with Muller in the 11th minute. I want to see the top goal scorer. I want to see the Golden Glove winner, the team of the tournament announced, the trophy celebrations, everything. This is going to take some time, but I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Besides some of the online features and the head-to-head -head game modes, possibly even some live content throughout the tournament, this is what you'll be getting. Just a tournament mode where you can customize who goes in, who's out, simulate the whole thing, use some online qualified nations it will literally be a copy and paste of the 2022 world cup dlc but don't expect anything else no challenge mode no scenario mode no special modes that'll get you hyped it'll be pretty bare bones so let me just warn you but you get this nice little message once we finish the group stages get a warning at this stage of the tournament several teams have been knocked out in group a we haven't really got any upsets here with the hosts finishing first meanwhile switzerland make it through there will be the best third place teams coming through so potentially hungry it could get through. You just never know with the rest of the teams. But for Group B, here's the first major shock. Spain crash out alongside Croatia. We've got Russia and Italy topping the group there and qualifying for the next round. I would love that to happen in real life. Let me live a fantasy. And I just realized you can't see the points on the side because the green with England, they come through alongside Serbia. Potentially Slovenia can make it out. However, Denmark are packing their bags, officially eliminated alongside Wales. The predictable happened in Group D, both France and Netherlands make it through potentially Austria. Group E turned things on its head with Ukraine making it through that playoff pathway. They ended up topping Group E alongside Belgium who come through in second. Slovakia have a chance. Meanwhile, Romania fourth rock bottom and that goes the same for Greece who were thrown directly out of the tournament. There's no more chances for them. Meanwhile, Portugal and Turkey solidify their round of 16 status as we take a look at all the matchups. First game on the plate, it's Switzerland versus Serbia. Italy get an easy draw versus Slovakia. France versus Hungary will be interesting. Meanwhile, Germany versus Croatia is going to produce fireworks. Russia take on Portugal. Turkey versus Belgium. That's interesting. England versus Slovenia. Quite an easy game for them. And Ukraine versus the Netherlands. Someone just turned the heat up a notch. Things are about to get spicy. Just like that, we simulated through and the round of 16 is done. Switzerland take the dub over Serbia with a narrow 1-0 win. Italy assert their dominance over Slovakia in a 4-2 goal Fest. Meanwhile, it was free scoring France with a 3 2 win over Hungary. The hosts make it past Croatia comfortably 2 0. Portugal do their best with Russia in a 3 1 display. Turkey were taken down in a five goal thriller versus Belgium. England had to do it in extra time versus Slovenia 3 2. And the Netherlands with a comfortable professional 2 0 victory to see them through to the quarterfinals. Besides that Spain upset, we haven't seen too many major shocks. Now that leaves us the quarterfinals, which are looking quite juicy here with. Switzerland versus Italy. And there are no easy games from here on out as France take on Germany in the Euro 2016 semi-final replay. 2016 underdog champs Portugal are going to take on Belgium and it'll be the Three Lions versus the Dutch to see who will make the final four. And this has got quality written all over it. And the quarterfinals produce goals galore as we have defending champs My Nation Italia making it through. Edging out Switzerland 2-1. We had the host absolutely demolish France. 3 Nil and are establishing 
puts themselves as a proper favorite. Portugal versus Belgium produced the first penalty shootout of the tournament. It finished 2-2 in extra time, and in Ronaldo's last dance, made it out 4-3 on pens. And oh god, the three lines, it's just never coming home, is it? They failed to make it past the Dutch as the Netherlands clamp a 2-1 win. And the semi-finals are up next. It's looking quite tasty because the old foes are at it again. Italy versus Germany, the hosts versus 2020 champs. And it's the two sides who always seem to underperform in recent tournaments. I mean, the Netherlands didn't qualify for one since the 2014 World Cup. And Portugal, who are fighting off the 2016 fluke allegations with Ronaldo's last major tournament. It's all up for grabs here, people. Now, some bad news here for the Italians as both Chiesa and Fratesi are suspended for tonight's match versus Germany. They'll be up against it, fighting against the hosts who are in red-hot form. But can they produce an upset? And no, in yet another five-goal thriller, we have got Germany storming their way through to the final with Muller, Kimmich, and Muziala on the score sheet. Berardi and Zaniolo for Italy, but it wasn't enough. Ten years after their World Cup victory for Portugal, they've got Paulinha. He's suspended for tonight as Neves drops back. We're going to slot Vitinha in that centre midfield role. But both sides are looking in tip-top shape, well-balanced and very strong. Let's see whose moment it is. Who's going to write their names in the history books? And it's going to be CR7 with a late career revival, a 64th minute winner. 1-0 against the Dutch and that's a statement victory. Who saw this one coming? Germany up against Portugal in a blockbuster match in the Euro 2024 final on home soil in the capital. It's all going down in Berlin and that's what they're fighting for. The official trophy. It's sad to see Italy not lifted again but look if they made it to the semis I'm personally going to a semi-finals game. If they make it that far I'll be very happy. If I even get to see them play live that'll be even better. But right now we got to lock in for the final. Both playing a similar formation. No suspensions or injuries for either side to worry about. Plenty of options and quality on the bench for both sides and they might have to dig deep into some other options if it goes to extra time and pens. But now though we filled with the strongest outfits and they're going to do battle tonight. Unfortunately you can't change the actual destination and, and what stadium you play at in tournament mode. Otherwise I would have switched it to Berlin, uh, the Olympia Stadion where the final's actually taking place. Now here goes nothing. It's the chance for the Germans on home soil to claim another piece of silverware and to do their nation proud after a few tumultuous years. Going home early in 2018, failing at the 2020 Euros. It is now time for them to put all that aside. I am going to jump to the tactical view. I won't be playing this. I'm going to remain as unbiased as possible and let the AI do battle. And a Ronaldo who looks like he's in career best form right now. And he cuts it inside the box. Verts inside to Muller, but it's a brilliant save from Diogo Costa. Body and Verts could have a breakout campaign as he slides in Rudiger. He gives it off to Thomas Muller and it's their second shot on target. The veteran shows his class in the big game. He's been in good form all tournament and the Germans are off to a flyer already. The perfect way to kick off the big dance. First blood Germany and it looks like they could go on to do some damage. Ronaldo won't be happy. And this time he actually gets to play the final, unlike 2016. Rafa Liao, when he's all alone up here, Rafa Liao is just going to take on the entire defense and to Stegen had to get a claw to that. Here we go, Bruno Fernandes in a dangerous position. He's won the ball back and Bruno inside to Bernardo Silva and it's another big boy save from Stegen. We're missing the grand stage of the Olympia Stadion. Town Park doesn't quite do it, but we've got to feel the vision and the Germans are still in pole position. Muller. Finds the young gun verts and he's gonna strike one from distance. It might fall kindly to Sane. And the chance for the second goes begging. Again, this overlapping run from Kimmich. The captain is dangerous and Leroy Sane in an abundance of space and that's the second. The Portuguese defense opened up like the Red Sea and Germany get that crucial second right before the half. A two goal advantage they say is the most dangerous in football but the way they're playing right now, they're just on a different level. They're in a different class. It is scintillating the football they're playing and if Nagelsmann can get them balling out like this it is going to be good night for every single nation they face this year as Portugal still in with a fighting chance though you've got to give it to their quality as Bernardo Silva finds Ronaldo this could be a goal to half the deficit and he's fluffed these lines and they just can't find that killer ball at the moment Guerrero might have to be a pot shot from outside the box Rafa Liao how many times do I have to say it to Stegen to the rescue how long can this German defense hold out? And Rudiger gave me the answer. Thomas Muller now, he was there in 2014. 
when they became world champions and he's about to set up the third to make them European champions in 60 minutes. The home nation are 3-0 to the good and have one hand on the trophy. The ribbons are going to be red, black and yellow if Portugal don't get their act together and perform a minor miracle. And Florian Verts launches his career on the international stage and is doing his nation proud. Now Neves though, Portugal, they're always in with a scoring chance and again to Stegen, just give him the Golden Glove Award. Now Ronaldo, they try Trying to get a goal back. Bruno Fernandes lays it off to João Cancelo. I don't know why they're celebrating. Lad, get the ball out the back of the net. you still got two more goals to send it into extra time. But the Portuguese are lapping it up. They're getting amongst it. Even the fans are celebrating a bit too hard. But it's a nice little bit of build-up play. And the poor touch from Bruno Fernandes ended up being an accidental assist. Is it a little bit too little too late though? Kimmich... The captain needs a deadly delivery here from the corner to get there. Fourth and it's off the line. Portugal are either playing with fire or getting really lucky. Wants to run at the defense and find the killer pass. <coughs> Ronaldo wants to get on the score sheet, but he's having an absolute stinker. He's dropping a disaster class on the big stage. Compared to their 2016 team, they run rings all around them as Thomas Muller puts the exclamation point on what has been an absolutely dominating display. The fourth for Germany and surely the goal to win it now. Your new European champions for 2024. They do it on their own patch. The veteran gets a double in the final. Are they going to keep on coming? They have no mercy. Muller lays it off to Muziala and it's a fifth. I thought he was offside by a mile, but he's beaten the offside trap. And this is just becoming embarrassing now for Portugal. Muziala joining in on the fun and this has just been a, a drought. But he has smashed that one home. And I thought I would get the Euro 2024 ball with this mod, but that might have been a setting I had to change. I'm not quite sure, but it's too late now. Just like for Portugal, it's too late to get the dub. Just to confirm that you can actually get the official match ball in this mod and it is in Included. Here it is in the settings. I just wasn't switched on enough to actually turn it on before that final. But the Arras Euro 2024 Fus el Bebe. There's the ball in all its glory. You can get a sneak peek already of how it looks in game. Magnon bouncing it up and down. The boys are warming up with it. The modders have done an absolutely a smashing job of adding it into the game. And it looks pretty picture perfect. It could honestly go down as an iconic match ball. It's got a little bit of everything. And is going to be the main showpiece for all the group stage matches. Yeah, it is got the VCHD seal of approval. It's a certified banger. Now let the celebrations commence. Let's take a look. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same old trophy celebrations. But I want to see the Euro branding. I want to see the trophy in all its glory before it gets added into the base game for the free DLC update. Germany ran rampant and no one was stopping them. Like I said, we should have probably had the Euro match official match ball and I wish we could have changed it to the uh, Berlin Olympia Stadion where the final will be taking place in real life but oh my god the game what is this angle bro no don't okay finally there is the trophy on the podium ready to be lifted by the german captain joshua kimmich and oh man that is looking perfect it is shining it is glossy it is looking absolutely immaculate and that pink and purple german glow from the away kit is shining off it the set streamers are out the confetti is popping there's going to be a wild night in berlin if germany actually go on to do this in real life i might have a a night in berlin to remember let's to say but the celebrations continue you can see the official trophy getting paraded around they're going to pose for the team photo it's the exact same celebrations we're used to but they're now officially crowned the UEFA Euro 2024 champions and the celebrations continue in the locker room the party's just getting started but let's see how they got there let's see what they did there's the official confirmation in the menus we get to see the winning cut scene to Stegen made about 10 saves in that final the trophy in the media conference room and Muller bags his brace that is a stunning photo from the match. Pretty photo realistic. I love to see it. The career mode bugs and glitches continue in tournament mode. I love the synergy. The most meaningless consolation prize for CR7 is that he did end up winning the golden boot. I mean, he's tied up top with Berardi, who's not even going to be at the Euros for Italy. He's injured. So that might put a little bit of an asterisk over my entire simulation. However, Muller's brace in the final took him up to the third highest goal scorer, tied with Saka. We also had Muziala scoring four. Mbappe got four. The likes of Arnautovic, Chalanoglu, Maranchuk, Moore, Unal, McTominay, Gakpo, Appenda, Vlahovic, and Hungary's Adam all tied with three goals. It seemed to be a goal-scoring frenzy type of tournament. Muller and Mbolo tied for the top assist with four each. And for the Golden Glove, I mean, it's only got to go to Stegen. He only kept two clean sheets with Fleck and the Dutchman, but the saves he made in that final, he was having the game of his life. You can see top goal scorers, assists, players, appearances, and all that. We've got Harry Kane only with two goals. 
goals. That would be disappointing. Griezmann and Mbappe combining for six. We got the champions who absolutely dominated and everyone else kind of. But I'd do with six. That is insane. I mean, he is going to be a major loss for the defending champs, Italy. Netherlands had a bunch of consistent goal scorers. So did Portugal. But Ronaldo with six, he's got to be disappointed that he barely showed up in the final. McTominay pretty much scored in every single game for Scotland in the groups, but wasn't enough to take them to the knockouts. The disappointment, Spain. I mean, finishing rock bottom is embarrassing. The 2010 world champions and the 2012 Euro champions. However, all errors must come to an end. Unal and Chanalogu turned up for Turkey, unlike in 2020. And Kiefer Moore bagged three for Wales as they exited in the groups. But that is going to be at the end of the first simulation. Now let's add a few icons and legends into the mix to see how they go in the modern era. Now the only downside about adding in icons, legends, heroes into these some of these national teams is that we've got to use the default nations that are already on FIFA and we can't add in some of the new nations that the other squad file made available in the game. So we're just going to have to do with the inaccurate group stages but it's all to show off what new icons and players it adds to the nations. Now Germany, if they weren't strong enough already, they're putting an even bigger target on their back now because they have got the likes of World Cup record goal scorer Miroslav Klose in his prime lead in the lineup top. Bola right behind him, slotted in as a center forward and prime Bastion Schweinsteiger running the midfield. If they don't go back to back in this simulation and win it all, it would be a failure. Italy finally get a proper striker back leading the line for them up front. It's Bob Bonatale, the Udinese legend, the striker the streets won't forget. I think he's a hero card in FC24, but he's a legend for all Italians. Croatia get the likes of Davil Suka leading the line up front. It's given the same energy as Di Natale back to Italy. It's like they finally have a goal-getting striker that is going to guarantee and find them back of the net. Now, this is where it gets interesting for England because they've got some major upgrades to boast about with the likes of Bobby Moore, the World Cup winner back in 66 slots straight into the starting team, alongside the shot stopper Shilton at 88. And just to show off Ledley King at the back to partner up with Moore, that is a formidable wall that could potentially get them all the way to the final. You never know, it just might be coming home. Never mind, forget what I said. France have an abundance of legends to choose from, but it's the cult heroes really start to shine with this mod as they've got an 89 rated puppy in up front, or they can choose between him or Gavou. But most importantly, it's Franck Ribéry who can't even get into this current France team unless we switch Mbappé to right wing. The addition of these legends and icons add even more firepower to an already star-studded France squad. This is scary. It's one gem each for the Dutch and Poland. For the Poles, it's Smolensk partnering up front with Lewandowski. That is going to be a deadly duo. And for the Netherlands, it is going to be the 2010 World Cup finalist. He was robbed of the Ballon d'Or. Prime into treble winner, Wesley Schleider in the middle of the park. And Belgium, they haven't got many legends to pick from, but they get the one and only Vasson company back in the back line. For our simulation finalist, Portugal, it is a brand new suite of retro talent. Racing the squad, we've got Paulo Futre, an absolute legend of the game, slotting in at left wing, partnering alongside longtime legend Eusebio to replace the goat of current times Ronaldo up front. You've got a modern day hero and an OG icon battling up front for Portugal in the modern era. This is going to be interesting. And if I didn't mention your nation, I'm sorry you didn't get any new additions to your squad. No icons and heroes for you. I don't know, blame the squad file. I don't make the rules. And as always, all the mods I've used in this video will be linked down in the description below for all you guys to try out. Here we have it. We've simmed through to the end and here is the final for our icon euro 2024 edition you're not gonna believe this it's france taking on serbia serbia just went on a super run an underdog story for the ages that has set them up it is kind of like the 2018 world cup final france versus croatia now they're taking on serbia france with icons galore they had three editions i don't think serbia got even one so it's kind of weird to see germany got knocked out in the groups let's just see the round of 16 we had england knocked out against Serbia. So there you go. Three lines. It's not coming home even with your former stars. Italy topped the group again. Spain actually made it out. We had England finishing third in Group C. France and the Netherlands qualify out of Group D. No surprises there. Portugal with a couple of their icons that finish undefeated with that 100% record. But it all fell to pieces against Spain in the round of 16. Germany with all their new icon hero additions taught Di Natale's Italy a lesson. France dealt with Wales 2-0 and then 
company's Belgium knocked out against the final of Serbia. A seven goal thriller. Sweden, who shouldn't even be there, but we've just got to have them there to fill the competition. Knocking out Spain 2-1. Germany's icons dealt with Denmark. France took down Hungary 2-0. And then, okay, so it was Germany and France in the semi-final. We were robbed of a big dance final, but here we have it. It's the underdog story, David vs. Goliath. And we're going to watch it play out, although one of their stars is actually suspended. Pup in with the red card. It doesn't matter because they've got Govu to slot straight in as a perfect replacement. It's just unfair how much talent they've got. Present day, current day, back in the day. They're a talented bunch. I'll give them that, but they should win comfortably tonight if all goes well. If it goes according to the script, Ribéry is going to lead the French to yet another Euros title. It was Govu the replacement for Papin to get it all started in the fifth minute. Malinkovic, Savage fought back with Serbia's equaliser, but France were just too strong. Kamavinga, Mbappe to finish it all off. And France will be crowned the Euro 2024 champions with a catch. It's the Icon slash Hero Legends edition. Two simulations, two different results, and who won the golden boot? It was the present day superstar Mbappe. The only Icon in sight was Miroslav Klose for Germany. Five goals and five finishing in fifth place. Well, Serbia managed to slot home three. Schweinsteiger got two from the middle of the park. Those were the actual legends and icons that really made a difference. So there we have it, lads. The UEFA Euro 2024 mod in full effect. It's unofficially in FC 24, so let me know all your predictions and comments down below. Who do you think's gonna win it all? Who's gonna be a top goal scorer, best player, break it, have a breakout tournament? I'm so thankful that we've got this mod because I'm actually gonna be watching the Euros in Germany. Germany or when it releases so I won't be able to play the real thing and see if it's any good if it's bugged and glitched like the 2022 World Cup one was so I'm happy I got to get an early feel for it and see who FC 24 thinks is gonna take home the Holy Grail as always if you made it this far make sure to drop a like on the video down below hit subscribe turn on the notifications all that good stuff so I've been your boy Sir BCHD have a great day take care and I'll catch you all in the very next video bye bye